come only if we keep the laws. Read that, Matthew 24. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 4. Uh -huh. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that nobody deceives us. The Catholic Church has been deceiving us for over 400 years. We should not be going to church tomorrow and celebrating Mother's Day. We shouldn't do that. Read. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come in the name of God, saying, I am Christ. Many shall come with all of these religions. The Catholic Church is of the devil. The Christian Church is of the devil. It don't matter if that's Pentecostal, Baptist, Mormon, or Mormonism, the, the Seventh-day Adventists, they're all of Satan. Keep going. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. A lot of our people are caught up in these false religions. Continue and will continue to deceive many because it, it keeps doing it and it keeps doing it. And uh, as much as people, you know, go ahead and get, I, I want to call it enlightened, but like are, are the truth spoken to them, they don't want to wake up. The, the Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. A lot of people. We love to be in sin. Sin is pleasurable. Sin feels good. You want to be caught up? We want to smoke weed. We want to remember during the time of um, Noah, when God gave Noah the warning. I think ain't no, ain't no one want to listen to him. I think back to that all the time, like, 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 if God were to come back and create another flood, would I be on the ark? Yeah. You know, and, and you really got to think to yourself that, that, that kind of mentality, all right? right? We're we going to go through this law right here. Leviticus 21. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. God said not to shave your head bald or shave the corner of your beard. You know when um, you turn on the TV, especially like football, basketball, and sports. They love to shave their hair bald yeah. like Michael Jordan or Charles Barkley. You understand? They think that it looks good. But God said, no, don't shave your head. But even if you bald it naturally, God said that's clean. But what we desire, we desire to be, to go after the heathen, which is desire of sin. Right? The story of Samson, right? Yeah, Samson, he went to um, uh, a woman of another nation, Delilah. And then he slept with her, and then he told her his, his secret, and, he caught, and she cut off his hair. That's, that's, um, it's a little different because he was uh, a Nazarite. He took, he took a certain vow. It's a little bit different. But the, the law where it says he shall not round the corners of your hair, a lot of people do that. They think it's fashionable. Even our beard, like, do you shave your beard off? I shave the bottom piece. I'm not gonna lie. You got to keep that thing full. You got to keep it full. I'm like getting you see other men. Just definitely. let it grow out naturally. You know? Keep it full because that's, that's what God wants you to do. How you doing, my brother? And it's Derek. Derek? Derek? Yeah. Derek, nice to meet you, Derek. You know who you are according to the Bible? Of course not. Of course not? Derek, what's your nationality? Y'all don't walk by like three, four, five times. Black. Black. I love that. Black is just a color that you can find in a crayon box. Yeah, they want us to, they want us to, to go off with they, what they have. They. They. Who's they? To, Who's that they? Ones that's really behind the history books when it's being twisted. Who, who's that? Make it plain. They still go all the way back before that, before that, the Rockefellers ago, before that time. Uh, but who? The, the Lord got enemies on this earth. Yep. We got to identify that because how are we going to know who to fight up against? How are we going to know who's telling the truth if we don't know who our enemies are? So make it plain. Who is the they? Who's the one who is putting lies in the textbooks? Who's the one who's controlling the government? Bring it out! Well, I know who's controlling the government. Who's that? The, the what nation place. of people is that? It ain't black people. No, 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 no. It's Mormon based. Mormon based, Masonic. Uh, I'm gonna make the plane. I don't wanna say too I'm much. I'm gonna make the plane who God's it. enemies are. That's another word. But the it is a, it is another one. But he gonna beat we're gonna beat around the bush. But God's gonna make a plane who our enemies are. Deuteronomy 28. 40 yeah, 48. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 48. Uh -huh. Bring it out. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies. So this is a curse. This is a curse that we're going through. The Lord put the nation of Israel 
under curses because we do not obey God's laws. This is one of God's curses. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. The enemies which the Lord sent against us. God said we shall serve. It, it's not a good thing to be a servant to your enemy. It ain't. Because you're my enemy. If I got beef with you, if you're killing my people, it's never going to be a good thing for me to serve you. That's called slavery. We're going to finish it up. Enemies which the Lord shall send against me uh, in hunger. In hunger, we shall serve our enemies. So whenever you want something to eat, God said you shall serve your enemies. So who owns all the food? Who owns the food supply? Who's in control of that? Okay. Walmart, uh, Burger King, McDonald's. If you want something to eat down at the any fast, hey, even Little Caesars. Who owns that? It ain't black folk, I'll tell you that straight. It's not us. It's our enemies. Go ahead. And in thirst. And in thirst. When you want some water, some aquafina, some crystal geyser, even the water to come into your own apartment, you got to serve your enemies. Go ahead. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. When you want clothes to put on your body, you got to serve your enemies. Because your enemies will be in charge of your clothing. You got you to gotta spend your hard-earned money, serve them, build up their economy. And God's going to make a plane right here. And in one of all things, huh? and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. He shall do what? Put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Our enemy shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Who put the yoke of iron on the so-called black man's neck? Who did it though? Where's the... Who put this on us? Who did this to us? It was Derek, right? Mm -hmm. Derek, who did this? Yeah, they're like, they're like they, had, they had the slave people before. Come on, man, make it plain. The so-called white man the, put the, the yoke of iron right, on our neck. The, the so-called white man is who we're serving in the want of all things. Right. When we're hungry, we gotta go to the so-called white man. We're all know little Caesars. I thought this was a black community. But shouldn't it be owned by black businesses? Right. Not only just the so-called white man, but the so-called Chinese man, the so-called Arab man. Us now. They've been doing a great job doing their work. Well, we've been trying to trying to do a great job bringing us together so we can press this, but we only pressing it now with just the few we have left. So we outnumber, regardless. So you understand who the enemy is? Do you believe the enemy is the so-called white man? They, they See, there place, you go. You gotta make a play, man. They put them in place of power over us. They let them take over. Yeah. Who's they? Back. Who's they? Whites. Whites. Listen to what God said. Read at the top of 48. Verse, no, read verse 47. Deuteronomy 28, verse 47. Uh -huh. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Derek, are you serving God joyfully with gladness of heart? Sure am. You sure am? Are you, what does it mean to serve God? It, it, to, to the best of my knowledge, I know that whatever we know. To serve God means to keep his commandments, right. to keep his laws. Read. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God huh? with joyfulness and with gladness of heart huh? for the abundance of all things, uh -huh. therefore... Shalt thou serve thy enemy? This is the curse that the that God put on the so-called blacks and Hispanics. Because we did not listen and obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and we did not serve him in the one of all things, God said we will serve our enemies. God is the one who allowed the so-called white man, this man right here, to conquer us, to take us from that west coast of Africa and ship us over here. God allowed that to happen because we're not keeping his laws. Keep going. Therefore, shalt thou serve thine enemies, huh? which the Lord shall send against thee huh? in hunger. God sent him against us. In hunger, we got to serve our enemies. And in thirst, huh? and in nakedness, huh? and in want of all things. Huh? And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck huh? until he have destroyed thee. That's the so-called white man. And we're going to keep on reading. God's going to make it even more plain. It's not just something that we're making up. We're reading it out of the Bible. Listen up. 
Keep going. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. That nation that came up against us came from far away. Because you agree that we was in Africa, right? You agree, right? So God said, while we was in Africa, a nation shall come up against us, and that nation shall come from far. From the end of the earth. From the other side of the earth. As swift as the eagle flyeth. As swift as what? The eagle flyeth. As swift as the eagle flyeth. The eagle. What is the national bird of America? What do you have on your dollar bills? You got that eagle. God called him our enemy. You believe that? What you said? Uh, I believe it. You said you do or you I don't? I can't believe it. I, I can't believe it. I just. Yeah. Okay, maybe it'll take some time for that to resonate in your spirit. But God said, do not trust that man. Give me that. No, I just. So about 12, 10. See, with Derek here, anything that's a historical that's already written and posted, I automatically don't believe it. Okay, you said everything that's historical, written, and everything so you don't believe in the Bible. And, and, and post it, and post it. To a certain extent, I do, and to a certain extent, I don't. It's so just, just because, just because of, of how they already wanted to believe something else, and I'm saying they, whoever was in control in the, in the beginning, whoever had the most power, that's who I'm referring. That's who I'm referring to as they, white man, whatever you you know okay. want to call them. But they're the ones that you know took over the Indian land, took over blacks put the control, had the yokes on us, but anything that's written, no, it's all for cover-ups we can believe now so we can maneuver the way that we maneuver to not have power. I don't believe nothing that's written down in there. So, so, so you you're know, saying I'm, you don't believe I'm in a Bible? different now. I used to, yeah, but after, okay. I about want... 10 years ago, I stopped. Oh, why, why'd you stop? Because uh, you just, you just no, had trust because issues? It, it all came to, you know, once you just see stuff and, and how... Okay, give me Isaiah. I want 41 and When you see how black entertainment 20. is, you can see, you can see the, the All right. in it. All right. So once you see All right, that let, 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 me, let me deal with that. Let me deal with that. Be because, yeah, because... No, I want... um. Yeah, that one, 4121. This is not an ordinary book that you could just open up and, and, and write something down and then it... You know, like a man doesn't have that willpower to just write something random down and for it to happen. The Holy Bible is a book of prophecies. It's going to show you what happened to you in the past, present, and future. This is the only book on the planet that could do that. Because out of all the books that's here on this earth, no book talks about our history in detail as the Bible. And no book is going to show us the future, what's going to happen in perfect detail. So I want you to listen to this verse, 41 and 21, uh huh? Isaiah 41, verse 21. You know? Produce your cause, saith the Lord. So in the Bible, it says to produce your cause. So you said that you used to believe, but now you don't. The Bible's going to challenge you a little bit, you understand? He's going to say, all right, Derek, produce your cause. Read. Bring forth your strong reasons. Bring forth your strong reasons why you don't believe the Bible. Bring it forth, because we're going to deal with it. The Bible talks about everything. The Bible's going to pinpoint it, make it plain. Like how easy it was to understand that the eagle relates to the white man, and the white man put the yoke of iron on the neck, and the white man is our enemy. That's plain to us. Read. That the king of Jacob, let them, let them bring them forth and show us what shall happen. So bring forth your knowledge, bring forth your books to show us what shall happen in the future. The Bible can show us what's going to happen next year, what's going to show us what's going to happen when World War III crack off. The Bible explains in perfect detail why that there's um, that problem going on in the so-called Middle East today. It, it makes it so plain. So that's something that you got to do, Derek. You got to bring forth some detail and explain to us, well, why is the black man in the bottom of society? Why is the black man being gunned down in the street? Why is the black man, why? The white man could do a crime, get a slap on the wrist, but the black man get 20 years. But but that's your opinion, there, and we got to move away from that. I just seen the effects of it. The effects of it started with the pandemic. That was already that was already written before that happened. That's our nature. Read Isaiah 46 and 10. Read Isaiah 46 verse 10. Declaring the end from the beginning. God could declare the end from the beginning. That's future prophecy. 
Read on. And from ancient times, the things that are not yet done. From the ancient times, the things that are not yet done. How you, do, how you doing, my brother? What's your name? Jarvis Blackman. Jarvis Black. The Bible Black says Blackman. Yeah. Jarvis Blackman. Nice to meet you, Jarvis. What we're going over right now is how the Bible is able to predict things before God could even, um, no, before man could even see it happen. Bring it out. Because that, that spiritual power that comes with that thing. I'm on it. It's not an ordinary book. It doesn't come by the will of man, and we're going to get that in um, First Peter. Finish this out. Declaring the end from the beginning, uh -huh. and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, uh -huh. saying, my counsel shall stand, uh -huh. and I will do all my pleasure. God said, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Th give me that in the First Peter. So the point of that is, bro, right, when it says declaring the end from the beginning, in the book of Deuteronomy, it talks about our people going into slavery. That was a long time ago. Bring it out. That was written, right? A couple thousand years, and then it happened. So when you say you don't believe certain things, we understand that. But the Bible is showing by prophecy how true the book really is, right? You can't go against slavery. When it talks about show, give me that 2860. Let me show you something real quick, because you wasn't here before. And we're going to show you this, Mr. Black Mark, right? We're going to show you this. Watch this, Deuteronomy 28, Deuteronomy 68. Real quick. Because it's showing you how people came over in ships. There's no book that's saying that from 2,000 years ago. Hey, you're going to go back to slavery again in ships. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Now it says Egypt here because our people were in slavery in Egypt. Now we know ourselves. We say, oh, we're the Egyptians. We're not the Egyptians. We were in Egypt as slaves. We did build the pyramids as slaves. So that's why the Lord said, I'm going to bring you back into Egypt again with what? With ships. With ships. Now, if you know the proximity between Israel and Egypt, they would never have to take a ship to go there. That makes no sense. They would just walk in there, right? But it said with ships because this right here in America, in, in, our, in our places where we slave at, this is modern-day Egypt. Modern-day Egypt, my brother. All right? That's how come when you look at Washington, D.C., they got the obelisks. You see them in many cities, right? Even on the back of your dollar bill, you got the pyramid with the eye. This place was based on Egypt and Rome. That's why the Bible says that, right? For us to be able to connect. When that time comes, we see what? The clues. You know what I mean? We see in those clues. Give me that thing in Revelation real quick. We went over this before y'all came. We're going to touch it real quick, and I'm going to hand it back. Before you go, Revelation 11 and 8. Watch this. Because you know how they talk about being woke? Because we walk around dead. Now. We dead for real. Watch this. Revelation chapter 11, verse 8. And their dead bodies shall lie in the streets of the great city. It says their dead bodies are going to lie in the streets of the great city, which is known as America. Their dead bodies. Watch this. Which spiritually oh. is called Sodom and Egypt. Which spiritually, that great city is known as Sodom and Egypt. Why are they calling it Sodom? Why is the Lord calling this place Sodom? Because there ain't nothing but homosexuality, all type of mad fornication, right? You got two men and two women marrying each other. That's against God's laws, right? And he's going to Egypt because what? We here as slaves just like before. But watch this. Where also our Lord was crucified. Where it says where also our Lord was crucified. Christ was crucified over away on the other side of the world. So why are they saying that? Because now you got what? The so-called white man. People look at him as Jesus Christ. This, this is outrageous. Christ is a black man. Right. We're not right. saying that's exactly him, but that's the composite sketch. Right? If somebody robbed you, you're going to be like, oh, he's six foot one, uh, around six foot one, six three. Uh, he's about 200 pounds on his own. That's what the Bible, when the Bible uh, talks about Christ, this is what we get. Not this guy. This guy is called Caesar Borgia. He's a real man. Caesar Borgia. He was written, he was drawn as the new Jesus Christ by uh, 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 Leonardo da Vinci. Okay? So, so these, are the, these are all the myths that's being dispelled by the Bible. Watch this. Verse 9. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. Right. Well, it says they're going to see their dead bodies, right? For 350 years is what it's saying during that time of slavery, give or take, right? And it said they're going to see those dead bodies, but they won't allow them to be buried. Why not? Watch this. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them oh. and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. Right. So now they're calling those dead bodies the two prophets, which is what? The nation of Israel and the nation of Judah. 
Bring it the out. 12 tribes of Israel, right? Right. And what? They gave us as gifts. Y'all know that, right? During the time of slavery, they would give a, 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 a slave to a little white girl. Hey, here you go. And, and she's running around. They got a movie like that. And she's running with him yeah. on a leash and all that. The Lord is telling us this is what's going to before you during them last days. Watch this. And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them. Mm. And they stood upon their feet. A great, a, a great fear fell upon them which saw them. Right, hold on. Remember, they was dead. How's the spirit going to come on you and now you're alive? It's talking about spiritually dead. You don't know who you are. When we ask a brother, who are, well, what's your nationality? I'm black. No, 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 you're not black. There's no place called black. Bring it out. So now we were spiritually dead. So the spirit came. The Lord said, now I'm going to show y'all who y'all are. Y'all the nation of Israel. Right. You from the tribe of Judah. You from the tribe of Benjamin. You from the tribe of Issachar. So on and so forth. Now what? We're keeping the commandments and we coming up. Now we're raising ourselves back up. That's why when you read in Genesis where it says, the Lord breath of uh, breathed life into Adam's nose, right? Or to Adam's body. That's all the commandments. Gave him, life, gave him understanding. Come on. Verse 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. That's it. We good right there. But I just wanted to show y'all how now the Bible is talking about our slavery and happened. Now the Bible is also talking about us now getting refreshed in these last days. Coming up. Learning who we are, keeping the commandments, and waiting for that return. Because it's going to be something real crazy that's going to happen, y'all. You know America going to fall. It's happening. All this what we watching about uh, 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 Iran, all this, all this is in the Bible. We ain't got time to get into it. This is all in Second Ezra. talking about the Iranians going to get the Chinese and go against America. All it is written. So we don't have no reason not to believe. I understand what you're saying, my brother, because certain things were set up for us to keep going down that wrong path. You're correct. But what they did, they couldn't change the Bible. They just changed the teachings. There you go. You see what I'm saying? They didn't change the words. They changed the teaching. So therefore, you would never look in the Bible. But now we read it. You can't tell us that Christ ain't black. We just read it. Right. Revelation is saying it's what? He's he dark. Like, burnt, like he was burnt in the furnace. What are we going to get out of that? Him? Have you ever read that? Okay, so we know what it is. So if Christ is from the tribe of Judah, then what are the people of, of, of the Israelites? Right? We just, before we, we were talking to a, a brother who claimed that he's a Mexican, right? But he doesn't know he's from the tribe of Issachar. So we showed him in the Bible how he's from the tribe of Issachar. We showed him in historical records that even a white man knows that the Mexicans are from the tribe of Issachar of the nation of Israel. That's this right. is a known fact. They are Israelites. They're not uh, and that's Spanish. where their fear comes from. That's why we're hunted like that because our right. numbers are so great. Right. We don't yes. We don't realize yes. We go. Very good. Yeah. And what he said was they separated us so it looks like our numbers are small. But when we're all together as one nation, how can we possibly be stopped? That's why the Lord said we are as the sand of the sea. When you take, let's say you take all the Mexicans, you take all the American blacks, you take all the West Indian blacks, all these people. Now, hey, y'all are all the same family. Y'all ain't know. How much people is that? The world is in that, trouble. If that relates to what I said, what I referred to in the beginning, as right. that was the reason why we have certain owners and we're not the owners. We've exactly. been outnumbered according to how it's, they've been wanting us to yes. be outnumbered. Yes. And they've used that for their power. And so give me Deuteronomy 28. We got to go? No. Ten, 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 minutes. ten minutes. Give me Deuteronomy 28 when it talks about us changing, them changing our names. Because that's, that's how they separated us. Because now, okay, I'm, I'm Mexican. So now I don't want to relate to Puerto Rico like a brother brought out earlier, right? Mexican, I'm better than a Puerto Rican. No, 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 we're not the same. My Spanish is better than your Spanish. All this garbage. You from America, I'm not the same as the West Indian black people. Uh, you know what I mean? And, and so on and so forth. It's garbage, right? But watch this. This is what the Lord told us was going to happen. Watch this. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations whither the Lord shall lead thee. He said you're going to become an astonishment and a proverb and a byword. That byword is what I want. Because you're no longer an Israelite. Now you're black. Now you're American. Now you're Dominican. Now you're Puerto Rican. Now you're Mexican. Now you're Guatemalan. That ain't what the Lord called us. That's what the white man called us. Right? So we, we got to do what? Gather ourselves together. Get that real quick. Except for not. All right? We got to gather ourselves together, my brother. That's why we're here. To teach our people so that they may hear and come on in and learn. Because we got to walk in the same unit. If we're not walking together, ain't nothing going to get solved. Right? Like, we spoke to many pastors and stuff out here in Oakland and all that. And 
people, they want to make changes, right? Everybody want to see a change. But if you're still celebrating Christmas, and I'm not celebrating, then how are we really doing this? It don't make sense. Our kids need to be knowing that Christmas is garbage. We all need to be moving the same. Now, of course, you all like a certain car. I'm going to like a certain car. That's different. But when it comes to serving the Lord, we need to be on one page. Right. Watch this. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yay. Gather together, O nation not desired. That's the whole point. We, we're a nation that is not desired. All right? America hates you. Right now, right now, they put so much into you that you didn't even want to say the white man. Right. Meanwhile, Jesus. your face is covered and your eyes are covered. And you worry about Biden saying, hey, that's uh, that's my man Ralphie right there. He ain't going to know you. Just call the white man the devil and let's get it over with. Because right. he's the right. devil that the Bible speaks about. Right. We're going to tell you straight. Right. It's, it's real. It's real like that. In the book of Isaiah, right, 14. Give me that real quick. We're going to show you something. This is what's going to happen in them last days. We are going to take over, my brother. I know, it's, I know it look crazy right now, but we are going to be the head. The so-called white man is going into slavery. I know it sounds crazy, but this is what the Bible is talking about in more places than one. Come on, give me that first, the first three. Isaiah 14, verse 1. For the Lord will have mercy on Jacob, and will yet choose Israel and set them in their own land. Right, he's going to set us in our own land. Watch this. And the strangers shall be joined... And the strangers shall be joined with them, and they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. Right, so the strangers are going to be joined unto us, and they're going to cleave unto the house of Jacob. That's the 12 tribes. Listen close. And the people shall take them, and bring them to their place. And the house of Israel shall possess them in the land of the Lord for servants and handmaids. So it's saying we're going to possess not just the so-called white people, all of the nations as servants and handmaids. This is a prophecy, bro. The same prophecy that said we went into slavery, we did. The same prophecy that said you're going to put them in slavery. Watch this. And they shall, and they shall take them captives, whose captives they were. Uh -huh. And they shall rule over their oppressors. And they're going to rule over their oppressors. Bro, this is good news. You ever hear that? The gospel is good news. That's the gospel right there. Yeah, that's right. that's the gospel. Hold that right there. Give me Revelation, Revelation uh, 2, 13. 2, 2, 2, 2, no, 13. 13. 9 and 10. Watch this. This is in the Holy Bible, my brother. This is what God is saying. Watch this. Revelation. Yep, 9 and 10. Revelation. 13. Chapter 13, verse 9. If any man have an ear, let him hear. So the Bible is saying, if any man can understand what I'm about to say, listen close. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that led others to be slaves is now going to be put into slavery. Watch That's this. Right. He that killeth with the sword uh, must be killed with the sword. He that killed with the sword must be killed with the sword. We heard that, and we saying, okay, a brother might kill somebody. You say, okay, he may get killed because of that. That's the minor of it. That's the microcosm of that law. But the main law is the so-called white man was given that as a gift, his sword play, his weapons. So the Lord is talking about him, saying that man who's a murderer like that, he going to get murdered. Right. But, but I want you to hear this last part. Right. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. They say, the Lord is saying, if you're a saint and you got faith, you can't wait for that to happen. Right. You understand? When everybody talking about I'm going to heaven, we talking about this part right here. Right. This is heaven. Right. Rulership right. on the earth. Right. Rulership over all our enemies. That's the heaven that God is talking about, my brother. But before we get to that, we got to keep these laws in the faith of Christ. We have to. Right. That's the only way we're going to get to that point of ruling. Same thing with Christ. That's why he had to go through all what he went through. If he didn't go through that circumstance, that, uh, that, that crucifixion, he was never going to be in a position he's in today where he's coming as a ruler. Because he's going to be the one coming back and setting it off. It's a yeah, war that's going to happen, bro. Yeah, the biggest point I'm getting out of, getting out of what, you, what you have going on here is that, yeah, keep the, keep the dog, uh, don't disobey the law. That's right. Don't disobey the law because there's been consequences coming. Yes. All the time, even cursings. That's so, right. So, you know. The more we disobey, hey, the more let us just go down. That's right. That's so for right. you, brothers, it's going to be a special place in there. The harder y'all work, it's going to be a special place for you when you get we, there. We, bro, you got to you know, get on with us. You know, Our job is to bring all our family. That's why it says, gather yourselves together. Right. right? right. So that you may come on and get do this work and teach your family and teach your people. Bring it out. You know what I mean? Exactly. And then we go together as a family. Yep. We can't win alone. No man is going to stand alone. If you're a billionaire and a million of us is broke, then what, what are we talking about? We haven't achieved anything, right? Yep. So the same thing with us. We've we, we seen this. We know what it is. So now we got to come give it to you. 
That's why the scriptures say, freely you have received, freely you give. You know what I mean? That's why you don't see us out here, hey, bro, uh, throw a little something, donation in the pot or whatever. We ain't got, we, we don't need that. We don't need that. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Nation is you. And finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord.